Okay, 2006 Mercedes S Plus 320 CDI with the, the OM642 V6 diesel. And I'm just literally finishing. I haven't recorded this repair. I probably should have. Uh, but I will extensively take you through all the details. So just finishing to put the seat back on, the driver's seat, carpets, assembling all the trims, etc. I still need to put the rear seat. That doesn't really matter for now. And um, I think if you guys really follow my channel for some time, you have seen this car on this channel. But uh, let's just... Uh, uh, sat down in there a little bit and I'll take you through all the details Hi everybody all my followers Be welcome to another video right. This is probably the fourth time. I'm trying to record this and this is gonna be the last I don't care how it goes. It's gonna be the last so the car this car actually featured the channel as I've showed you already um, S-Class 2006 uh, W221 This car has been here a few years ago um, When the owner asked me to look at the car again um he actually said to me oh was the car that you looked uh, just over a year ago i actually went to my youtube channel to make sure uh, i knew when the car was here uh, or just to check i would say and the car was actually in nearly five years ago so the time is a little bit the guy was a little bit wrong on time on the length of time and the length of time is actually important because if you remember on that video i think i mentioned something about the battery being already not too good um and the car ever since uh, the car has been literally parked uh, and never run, never drove for five years. Uh, so the car was brought here to me about a week ago. Yesterday, uh, the owner got me new batteries. So I've been installing the batteries yesterday. Uh, it was dark already. Um, and um, the rear battery, quite straightforward, to be fair. The front battery would have been straightforward, but... Uh, that sort of place where the battery goes the drains were blocked on that so I had to wash that down as I had to pull the tray uh, where the battery sits and clean that underneath uh, and I think I'm gonna have to do the same on this side where the same leaves because I think it's gonna be the same and probably if we leave it like this it's just gonna flood the, the, the front sam um, but yeah we had to do all of that so once I did that car started fine uh, and we left with the issues. The guy actually asked me to look at it. The guy jumped to start the car to bring it to me with two dead batteries, which was really, I don't know. Anyway, um, we just hope that spikes, etc. Because as you're going to see, uh, there is some spikes for over voltage. Uh, there's some codes for over voltage. So you never know. Uh, cars like these, guys, if you own one, your battery goes flat. Try not to jump it. Just try to charge the batteries and then start the car uh, jump start car like this it, it can be a very very expensive uh, thing uh, anyway long story short uh, long story short I haven't I'm not even halfway <laughs> so the issue of the car so I did all that yesterday and today I've started work on the car it was about nine o'clock is now about three o'clock in the afternoon and I just finished the sort uh, a issue that looking back I regret I haven't recorded it uh, probably I should have, but well, well, too late. So um, I can't recall exactly what was the issue uh, with the car five years ago. Uh, I do recall uh, one of the issues, which is what this video is going to be about. Ultimately, it's going to be from that if you last all that long. Um, but um, but the issue of the car was here at the time. The one we fixed um, was to do with the driver's door controls. Um, and if I recall correctly, I think nothing would work on the door and we replaced the switch or something like that and it was working fine. This time the car came again and with the, the passenger, with the driver's seat, controls not working. So all these controls, let me just try to show you. So all these controls here for the, for the seat, to adjust the seat, it wouldn't work. Um, plugged in the star, so I'm using the star by the way purely because I have access to diagrams and stuff like that on a car like this you kind of need and um, basically the star could not communicate with the driver seat module which is the seat that lives under the seat which is the module that lives under the seat so I had to dismantle the seat I'm gonna 
Okay, I'm gonna put some pictures and clips that I have uh, because I was not recording, but I took a couple of pictures. Um, so I had to dismantle the seat in place, uh, some bits so I could get to the plugs. Once I scanned the can, as you can see, uh, something's not right. Um, so from there, I've checked diagrams, and diagrams were telling me that the can from the seat would go to a kind of a junction, a kind of splitter, if you will, a can a splitter. They, they have a name for that, which I can't remember now, which is in this case, on this side is N30 forward slash 33, is what that little box is called. But that thing lives under the seat, under the carpets. So I had to dismantle, I had to remove the seat and to remove the seat, I had to dismantle the wall front of the seat. Um, because I could not access all the bolts to remove the seat so I had to unplug the plug from the actually module that has all the wires for the motors figure out which wires were for the motors to slide the seat back and forth and then with the hotel thingy um, I applied voltage to the motor and I've slide the motor the, the seat backwards well first forwards to take the rear bolts then backwards to take the front bolts got the seat out lift the carpets and after a little bit of investigation we found the issue and look at this look at what happened I don't even know how I'm gonna put the picture but it doesn't really matter so there's here is the issue um, and looking at this it seemed to me that the wires have been shoot and I thought what the heck so clearly guys um, a mice got inside the car and start to go through the loom and um, I eventually found the mice rest in peace my friend uh, it's not gonna shoot any other wires that's for sure um, but um, it did some, da some damage on the current lines uh, obviously one completely gone which was the one for the seat the other one, I repaired the wires as well, um, and that's it. Put everything back on. Uh, the seat is now working, uh, so the commands for the seat, everything is working, it is back on and working. As I can uh, possibly show, I love to put the ignition on though, like this. So as you can, oh damn it, you're gonna be able to see. Okay, so. There we go, so all the controls are back and, and working. Okay, so we have communications with the module again, and this is this problem is now fixed. Um, and uh, but yeah, interesting how a little mice have done so much damage. Now, <clears throat> I don't know if the, the if he went elsewhere in the car and did any other damage, we'll have to. I guess wait a little bit and see what happens but for now uh, all the damage was on the trays on the on the loom underneath the seat and the carpet so on this side and as you have seen he died in there so hopefully it didn't went anywhere else um, but uh, yeah so this is where we are so far and uh, now I'm gonna take you through the the problem that this video is for so as per the title, I don't know why I'm going to name the, 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 the video, but if you recall at the time when we did the initial uh, repair on the car four years ago, or nearly five, one of the issues with the car was as well the actually uh, radio. So I'm going to turn the camera around, and as you're going to see, uh, when I go to audio, as, oh sorry guys, as you can see, it shows that and uh, nothing works so if I select radio station list it doesn't show you nothing no FM uh, if I go there sound so as you can see it doesn't allow you to do nothing so when I try to move it that doesn't move so if you recall correctly guys uh, I hope you do uh, if you recall correctly, at the time, the module was a little mess at the back of the car, which is still kind of, I will show you in a second. But if you remember, the module was 
a little bit in a, in a state and if I recall correctly which I would have to go and watch my own video if I recall correctly the module that was there it was not even the correct module for this car at the time I told the guy I needed a module um, the module was quite expensive at the time the guy didn't want to spend the money and uh, and uh, he just he just went with the car like that uh, now apparently the guy wants to sell the car and he wants the ready to work so he got me a module so it got me a module apparently for this thing and that's what this video is going to be about it's going to be us try to plug in this module and program it to the car uh, before that obviously we have all these faults in there guys i just have the seat out i haven't cleared any cars yet uh, but what we're going to do is i'm going to show you the back of the car because well because well okay the rear of the car we still have I don't even know what this is. I'm gonna take these out, maybe from some sort of tracker, or I don't know. Uh, he has another antenna, kind of on this side. I'm gonna remove all of this, but look at this. And I've already kind of pushed that thing in there for the water to drain. Uh, these plugs were full of rust. I've cleaned them with a little bit of time, put them back on. There is signs that this you had. Look how high the water was already in there so this ECU has been underwater luckily it looks like I took this module out and it looks like the case is one piece all the way up to here so there was no way for the water to get inside the module which is a good thing so hopefully I hope so hopefully that will be good but obviously moisture around here could have got through somewhere and still damaged the module we don't know yet um, but what I wanted to look at is this look at that someone cut this off I don't know why and now obviously there is a straight access to the outside and whoever did that did the same on this side honestly this car is in a little bit of a mess it, it is not pretty I'm, pretty I'm not gonna lie it's an absolutely mess but we're gonna try to plug in that module and see what happens okay so we're just gonna plug the module here so we have it's a little bit of a mess there's a wire here that's been cut I don't have a clue where this goes. Then we have the plug, I believe this is for the speakers. Then you have another plug here. Then you have the, what you call it, optics. Then you have this plug here. I think it doesn't plug anywhere. I think this might belongs to a module that is not fitted, I would say. Uh, right, the key is off. It is, no it's not. Let's turn it off. Okay, key is now off, so let's gonna plug this thing and see what happens. So, on this side, what I'm gonna do is actually, before I plug anything, I'm just gonna give them a good cleaning. Good spray. Speakers. And then this I think is a subwoofer for this thing here. I just hope this module is good. Oh yes it is. Look at that. We have well that doesn't mean nothing, but we do have something there. Now let's gonna put this one here like so. And now the two antennas. And that's all it connects to this module. I'm not sure where this module is supposed to go. But we'll might figure out that later. For now, let's gonna go to the front of the car and see what's happening. Okay, so nothing works still, but I would expect that. Probably it's gonna need coding and all that good stuff. From my last scan, as you can see here, we had no communications with the electric seat adjustment front right, which is the driver's side. Obviously, I will have now because obviously we fixed the problem. There we go, we have communications. No fault codes, which is good. Now we're gonna go back and with another module that we had no communications with, which was my tuner, which is the one we just plugged in. So let's see now if we have communications with it. Yeah, okay. See if I can now communicate with it. Okay. 
Come on, don't let me down. Oh dear. Oh dear me. Right. Crap. Oh crap. Mm. Communication on the most bus is faulty. Okay, let me try to see. Oh Jesus, I just hope that mice hasn't done any other damage. Because if he has, then that's going to be bad. That's going to be bad. I think, I think I know what I'm going to do. Because I'm going to test these most, uh, the burst line. So obviously the burst line comes into this uh, command module. And then I guess it goes from here to the back because there's nothing else fitted on this car. Uh, that I think it takes uh, optical network. So let's gonna quickly do that and see what we have. Okay, so there is three modules on this most bus, I believe, from what I've seen. Um, there is this one, there is the amplifier and tuner we just put in, or the amplifier, I'll say, and, and tuner, I think it's tuner as well. And there's another module in there that I'm not 100% sure what that is, but we'll get to it. So if I do this, so if I put this light, ideally I would use this little red thing, but it's very difficult to point in there unless someone would do that for me. So if I put it like this, in front of this, I should have a bright light on both, on both of them here. Oh, just one. Okay, there's one here. So this is good. So the other one, I think this is the two opticals that comes from the front. So one will come to here. Okay, so that means uh, the other one is going to go to a module that's somewhere behind there. As you can see, I'm not sure what that is. So we're going to have to unplug that and see if we have light on that one. Okay, both units are removed. So the unit that's at the front, which is that one, is for the rear camera. And this one says Bluetooth in there, so I'm gonna guess this is gonna be for the phone. Um, I'm guessing for the phone. So we're gonna pull the thingy off. Uh, I'm gonna do this. Put it there. There is, and we have light. Look at that. So the bus from the front to here. So these two wires are actually good. So now we're gonna get the torch, and we're gonna check the one that goes from here. To there is really a small run so I don't know I don't see why it shouldn't be good so if, if, if I put the light in there oh, come on. like so there is we have light in there okay so the bus is good now why we have no communications I don't know yet let's kind of see if this module is good well, I hope. Uh, let's kind of do a few checks and see what we have. Okay, so the new amplifier, as you have seen flashing it, I can clearly see it's working. It's, look, there we go. Okay, so that's clear, clearly, well, at least it's tried to communicate. This module, however, oh, there is as well. So that one is also doing this thing. And we should see the same on this module here. Let me try to, which I'm not seeing at the moment. So let me maybe turn the ignition off. Ignition back on. All right, I wanted to see some sort of. Okay, and once you plug in the front. Module the command well just was just flashing a minute ago. He's not doing it now, but he's definitely flashing here as well So the loop is actually good Come on We have flashing there flashing here 
let me cycle the ignition see if I can make this to flash again just for a second okay let's see if it does anything come on you were working just a minute ago right 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 come on you just did a minute ago what are you waiting for all right that's weird because the front module should just be doing the same as these modules try to ask for there you go you see should be asking for communications. Don't know why he's not doing it. He should be doing it. Right, let's gonna see if Star has some sort of, I don't know, reset maybe for the bus communications. Let's try to see if I find anything. Ah, okay. So here we have our answer. So the TV, the tuner is actually responding. So there he says coded. That tells me what units are coded into the system. And as you can see, that's coded. Actual values is responded. Voice control system is coded. No, nope. so there's no reaction, which is okay. Cellular phone, which is the one we just seen at the back, is coded and he has reaction. Digital radio is not, but look at the TV tuner. Yes, it's coded. No reaction. So I think this is why the system is reporting. So we're gonna have to code the TV tuner off and I think the TV tuner is probably the system that would connect to this plug here there it is so that was the plug for my TV tuner so actually before I code it off let me speak with the owner and um, see if he wants to buy the TV tuner or what he wants to do uh, if he doesn't want to he doesn't want it well I can code that off um, if we can do it I hope I can uh, but let me ring the owner first and see how we go okay I rang the guy just in case although I knew what the answer would be uh, let's gonna try to code that TV tuner out uh, also I don't know what happened here look at this I'm not really sure what happened here but we're gonna have to try to maybe clean it Take this cover off and give it a clean and maybe just spray something so the rust doesn't carry on and it does have some sort of Chinese thing here plugged in I think I'm not 100% sure I think this is for a thingy that someone put in there for an iPod this thing I think it's for an iPod which the plug is broken anyway Jesus Christ I might just gonna take that off so it doesn't give any other issues. Anyway, that's gonna to try to do this. Um, I'm not gonna take it through. I'm just gonna do it because this video is gonna be already probably long enough. Anyway, let's gonna to try to do this. And uh, well, I might take it through. We'll see how it goes. Okay, let's uh, actually do this. Um, I think it's gonna be here on control unit adaptations. Let me see if it is. Okay, so read control, no, not programming. It's gonna be read coding. And change this specified configuration of most components. Bingo. I think the Maxi C's can also do this to be fair. Oh Jesus. Okay, so uh, it's a standard tuner, a tuner sound, which is the amplifier. And uh, and that. It's gonna be these three, isn't it? That's gonna be correct. Actually, let me go back at that list and see what we have in there because I don't want to do anything wrong here. Uh, so no, that was fault codes. Right, I'm gonna check that list again and uh, try to see if I can figure out the correct selection. Okay, so if I'm looking at this correctly and judging by this is the tuner 
no TV too, so it's got, it's going to be the cellular phone. It's, it's, oh jeez, it's going to rain. I need to get things out. Hold on a second, guys. Okay, here he is. It's just a cloud, but obviously. Anyway, welcome to the British weather. Right, this video is just getting a little bit of a mess, I think. Uh, anyway, so I, I went to the back, and what I have in there it says tuner, amp, then some letters at the front. So I'm gonna guess because it's the amplifier. I guess it's gonna be these ones too. These, no TV tuner. So I'm gonna do it like this. If it is wrong, we'll do it again. I'll do the top one. I don't know, unless the standard tuner and tuner sound is part of the same module in case two in one. I don't know. Let's gonna try it like this. See what happens. Okay, and after coding the TV module out, I get this. I'm just hoping that this tuner, I select the right one and was not the standard one. Uh, we'll have to see. So, as you can see now, the TV tuner, it says no reaction, coded no. So, that's now the way it should. So, let's kind of come out of this, clear codes, and see what happens. Okay, just found, just found the issue. I'm going to show you. And actually, it might was my fault when I worked on the car four or five years ago. I think maybe it was my fault. Uh, we're gonna have a quick look and I'll show you exactly what the problem is. Um, so actually, uh, we're gonna have, so what I'm doing here, when I'm gonna press yes, is gonna, I'm gonna restart the most, the optical network and I want you to see something here. So actually, why I just don't take this to the back. It should have enough battery, and I can show you everything at the back. I hope it's, it's not raining at the moment. Right, so, put it slowly in there. Okay, so, these little plugs, the most, the optical network, they have a direction of uh, traveling. So, the, the, the light, let's say, uh, needs to travel one way. Then come the other way, goes inside the module and comes back the other way. So when you look on the plex, you can see in there, there is two little arrows. So the arrow that points forward, so this side, is where the light should come out. So the module at the front, the, the which is the master, uh, is going to send the information through this. It's going to come out here, goes inside the module, then comes out, goes into the next module, to the next module and back to the master. But look what happens when I press, let's gonna say yes. Look where my light is gonna come out. <laughs> so it's gonna come out, it's coming out where on the opposite side. So we're gonna swap these uh, lines and that should bring the entire network back to life. Okay, so I'll just quick show you, because just in case you guys are not sure. So to remove it from the actually plug, you just pull this little tab here on the side that way. And this wall assemble comes out and then to take the cables off in case if you ever come across this or if you need to add other modules or whatever you need to have these things you just put something here on this edge there right here this will pull this little tab away from the connector and then the connector as you can see just slides out okay so we're gonna put it back in and do another test just to make sure we did it right and yeah, let's gonna do this again. So, if I recall correctly, it was this side. Oh, damn it. There's another arrow in there, and I'm pretty sure that's the right one that points in it. But we'll do this again. Should have done it before. Let's do this again. As you can see, the arrows, so the light should come out on this side. It's gonna restart the most buzz again. There he is, in the correct side. Okay. Okay, so let's put this here. Put it back into the module. Now that's gonna take the laptop. And let me take you guys with me. And look at that. <laughs> And we have sound. Look at that. And we have sound. Okay, so if I come here now, I should be able to change this. There we go. Which I couldn't do before. Look at that. Beautiful. 
Uh, let me just... Uh, there we go, so there's some radios in there already, as you can see. Uh, there we go, look at that! Beautiful. So, problem solved. I can just show you that it is working. Let me see if I get... Hold on a second. The time is right for me to There we go. So I think uh, I'm not going to get copyrighted uh, on someone talking. A so. Uh, a barn. so I've got a blank canvas. Creating yeah, you have a blank canvas. <laughs> Guys, it is working. So I'm really happy with this. Uh, we got it fixed. And uh, that's it. In the end, guys, all we had to do, um, as you've seen, was just um, uh, remove the TV from the optical ring, which was missing, um, and uh, and figured out what was wrong with the, the bus. So obviously, initially, I've seen that the bus was good because I could see the light at the back, but I didn't, it didn't, I didn't check that was in the right place. Um, but that's what testing does, and. That's why we do diagnosis. Uh, diagnosis. So the problem is fixed, guys. I'm really happy with this. Uh, so now we're just going to put all those modules back in place. Uh, clear the codes and move into the next problem. Uh, that's about it, guys. So before that, before we go, uh, we're just going to do what I've said. I really need to get more light into this garage. Uh, right, so we're going to remove this because the CD player it stays like this. And as you can see, the rust is already started to fail into this. So we're going to give it clean. But as you can see, there it is. So we're going to clean all of this, all of this, and give it a quick paint. So we're going to use probably the grinder, maybe. Or, yeah, we're going to have to take all this rust off. So let's going to do it. And then put everything back on. By the way, this came out, as you've seen, this was not in place. That's how the car came. I uh, don't know if someone has been tried to do anything just before the guy brought me the car. Maybe. I don't know. But uh, we're going to assemble everything back on. And um, that's it. So let's gonna get these done first. And look at that. Rust cleaned. And now we're going to give you a paint. And put it all back together. Look at that. I know it's black, but it is what it is. Okay, and after everything back in place, okay, look at that. All done. Beautiful. Everything working. Obviously, I'm not going to put the music, but because uh, I'll get a copyright strike. But you heard it working. Every, we have stations now. Everything's working. So, that's it. Uh, now, yes, we're going to wrap up this video uh, in order to move to the next problem. Um, and... Uh, that's it. I know it was a little bit of talking at the start of the video, but I thought it was important to explain you uh, what I have explained. And uh, that's it for now. So we're just going to assemble the boot. Um, and that's it. So with no further ado, guys, I really hope you enjoyed this video. Um, I hope there's some information here you can find it useful. Uh, hope you learned something. If you do still have any questions, any comments, please put them below. And like always, thank you for watching.